source. So in similarly, when earthquake hit any place, there will be some seismic waves. So after the seismic waves, if there are some obstacles, like obstacles, like if there are snow or any mountains, so it can be avalanche due to the snow and it can be it can be a landslide because, because of the mountain and the most severe case is like tsunami. When the earthquake occur in a ocean or a sea, after the effect, the after effect of that is the tsunami. Like for an example, let us consider this Indonesia tsunami that was happened in 2004 after an earthquake of eight magnitude. So you can see here briefly, when the earthquake hit, there are some waves coming out from there and those creating tsunami tsunami which hit the eastern, eastern, eastern part of the India. So these are the one of the ge geological effect of the earthquake. Then after the geological effect, then he, it will hit the main surface and it will hit our structures, our buildings or our life, you can say. So what will be our structural response? Then after the everything is finished, like everything is done within a like few seconds, then there will be losses. Like we lost our structural element, life, and many losses. So who who will study or analysis all those things? So first three parts, like earthquake, seismic waves, and geological effect, those are our hazard analysis, and those are generally done done by seismologists and geotechnical engineers. So seismologists are the those people who have a degree in geophysics and they study about the earth. Earth, earthquake, uh, whatever inside the earth, they study about it. And geotechnical engineers, you know, that is the one part of the civil engineers who study about the soil or foundations. So they generally do the hazard analysis. The hazard analysis are like ground shaking, how my ground is shaking, the fault structure, what kind of fault is there, what is the magnitude and intensity of the earthquake and the soil liquefaction. The geotechnical engineers will study what is the, how the soil is behaving during the earthquake. After the hazard analysis, we have response analysis, like how after the earthquake hit, the seismic waves are coming, how our structure is responding, how our foundations are responding. The geotechnical engineers will see what is the behavior of our soil or foundation of the building or any structure. And the structural engineers will see what will be the behavior of our upper structure, the main structure. And after the response, in the final stage, we have loss, like after earthquake came, hit, so we have a lot of losses. So losses in terms of the building, life, many things. So structural engineers generally use to find out what is the losses, like if a breach collapse. So what is what is the cause and how much loss is there? If it is able to, we are able to repair it or retrofit the breach or not. And there are loss analysis who count the what is the loss of the structure? What is the financial loss? So for this, I want to mention here, there are some companies like insurance companies like Goldman Sachs who hire earthquake engineers to calculate the losses for to give the insurance like natural calamities insurance like earthquake or wind energy or some other some other natural calamities. So there are some companies which give like opportunities for the earthquake engineer to to, to be their loss analyst during such kind of natural calamities. Moving on. So as we know, a long time ago, there was a large amount of heat was generated due to the fusion of large collision. So when this material collided, the earth was again become cooled and whatever the heavy materials were there, heavy metals were there, they, they went inside, inside the earth core and the lighter materials come out and rose up to the top. So our total earth interior are divided into like four parts, main four parts, like inner core, the inner core are generally made of solid or heavy metals like nickel or iron. Above that, there is outer core, which is generally completely liquid, and that is hot liquid. The temperature over there, it can be like 2000 degrees Celsius. You can say like the molten lava. And above that, there is mantle. The mantle have the ability to flow because the below the surface, outer core is liquid. Because of that liquid surface, the mantle can able to flow and about that the crust the crust where we live generally that's those are made of light materials called basalt maybe basalt or granites for example next is circulation uh, i know you have heard about the convective flow of water you have studied this kind of phenomena in your physics class in your school so if you heat a kettle 
so what will happen the water the water below the surface near the heat it will become hot and the above surface will be cold so there will be a circulation of heat the hot water will go up and the cold water will come down that circulation is called the convective flow of the water similarly in earth this phenomena happens where the hot lava the hot surface the below the surface it try to goes up and the cold surface try to come come down in that case our crust starts to move it will start to separate either in the their own direction or either go far away from them this is called the circulation the earth circulation and it tends to move the it tends to movement of the earth surface in different direction it can move towards them or far away from them now the plate tectonics because of this convective flow of metal materials the causes the crust or some portion of the metal to slide on hot molten outer core and this sliding of earth mass takes place in pieces called tectonic and we have like seven major tectonic plates like here you can see pacific plate north american plate south american plate african plate antarctic plate antarctic plate eurasian plate and indian and australian these are combined one plate indo australian plates so these are like total seven major plates the rest are total like 15 minor plates are also there which are divided here so generally the our earth moves around these tectonic plates let's see how these tectonic plates generated like million years of million of years ago like 550 million years ago you know that our earth surface was like one all the continent was one after that after so many years it start started to move all the tectonic plates started to move and it's get separated and today what we see is our present condition let's see this video to understand it better so you can see Del delhi is here the delhi is here just is sydney it's combined the india was previously combined with australia then it's get separated and india was in the south hemisphere now is going up up and it's merge with the asian countries where the himalayas was formed so this is our present globe now in tectonic plates we have different kinds of boundaries those boundaries are called interplate boundaries or intraplate boundaries but our main focus in earthquake is like interplate boundaries and most of the most of the earthquake caused by the interplate boundaries so there are three types of interplate boundaries convergent boundary divergent boundary and transverse boundary the first one is the convergent boundary and this is like one kind of peculiar or distinguished boundary in which one of the plate moves down and other plates can form a mountain like our himalayan himalayan mountain you know that the himalaya is the young floor mountain which is recent mountain and it is it is because of the convergent boundary we can see a around 8000 more than 8000 meter high himalayan top so let's see one video here how the himalayan continental was formed so indian plate 60 million years ago was like this it's went and combined with the eurasian plate to create young fold mountain himalayan range of mountains is you the moment the lithosphere or snake is going down the indian plate is going down and the eurasian plate is staying there which created a mountain so this is the our present 
present case and still this is moving like our himalayan mountain this plate the indian plate and the eurasian plates it is still moving it is moves like 5 to 6 cm per year every year it moves towards its surface and like after million of years we will see again all the all the plates will combine again at, at, at as it was before the next boundary is the divergent boundary in this case the boundaries are going away from each other they generally go away from the each other and one kind of example of this boundary is african boundary african plate african plate between the south arabia so they are separating the plates moving away from the surface so the plate either merge towards each other or they can separate in this case they are separating from each other and the third scenario is the transpose boundary in which the two plates moves in a lateral direction they moves away from each other but in a lateral direction so one of the example of this is california plate california plate in america usa so here the los angeles plate and the san francisco plate both are moving in a lateral direction and they, when they move they create a famous fault which is called san andreas fault moving on let's talk about what is earthquake so when the tectonic plates generally you know that the tectonic plates are the made of elastic but brittle rocky material in the tectonic plates we have a lot of rocky material so they produce a lot of elastic strain energy when they deform when they are like traveling towards each other in a lateral direction they produce a lot of elastic energy so when they are moving about the interface and reaches its strength like we have a rubber band if i stretch it once it reaches its strength what is, what will happen it will break similarly in this the tecto when the tectonic plates are moving so when it reaches its strength it break and the plate you see the this red plate at which they are moving this plate is considered called as fault or fault line so when they are moving when there is a like sudden slip this sudden slip causes the earthquake this is the reason of the earthquake when there is a sudden slip when two plates are moving from each other so it causes the earthquake that is called our earthquake it is explained in this video clearly so here this is our fault zone these are two plates they are moving away from each other so suddenly it's break and we can also this theory is also called elastic rebound theory next there are two different types of fault one is deep slip fault and there is a strike slip fault in the deep slip fault the surface moves in the horizontal sorry in the horizontal and vertical direction both but mostly in the vertical direction and there are two types of deep slip fault one is the normal fault and another is the reverse fault this is one of the example of the deep slip fault in this you can see this is the surface but it's moved vertically and this this uh, this fault is in moro solar in peru so you can clearly see the fault line here because of the this is the reverse the reverse deep slip fault you can clearly see the fault line which is moved the one surface is moved up and the other surface is moved down the another type of fault is the 
strike slip fault in this the fault moves in a lateral direction lateral direction and one of the example of this fault is the san andreas fault which is the only visible fault in the earth that fault is in california us and this fault is is the only visible it, you can see this fault with your, with your naked eyes and there is one of movie with the same name san andreas there is one movie called san andreas starting duan joshan you can watch that movie to understand this fault that to better understand this fault now we know what is earthquake the earthquake is caused by the sudden slip of sudden slip when the two tectonic plates are moving away from each other or two tectonic moving up down or away in a lateral direction so after the earthquake there is seismic wave so the seismic wave or the large strain energy released during an earthquake travels as seismic wave in all direction through the earth layer reflecting or refracting at each interface so generally we have two types of seismic waves one is body waves and another is surface wave the body waves generally occur below the earth surface and near the fault structure but whereas the surface waves are generally upper above it generally near the earth surface now body waves the body waves generally consist of two parts primary waves and secondary waves the primary waves moves in a straight line but it's gets tension and compression like expansion and compression like here you can see it is expansion and here it is getting compression so this is the wave the primary wave are the first wave which arrived after the earthquake this is the first seismic wave it undergoes extensional and compressional strain and sometimes you can hear it like if you are near the fault surface you can hear this the second is the secondary wave the secondary wave generally moves in both horizontal and vertical direction or we can say it's oscillate at a right angle and it generally damages the structure this is this secondary wave damages the structure more than the primary waves then surface waves the surface waves there are two types of surface waves one is the love wave the love wave is similar to the s wave but it moves only in horizontal direction it doesn't move in the vertical direction and it's it's a, if there is a s wave the secondary wave and the love wave both are coming together then it is like mostly destructive it is like mostly destructive waves if both both of them like secondary wave and love wave are coming together then relic wave the relic wave are like if you see the waves in the ocean they are like that only so it's come like that it moves it shakes the ground both in horizontal and vertical direction and it generally make a particle or material particle oscillate in a elliptical path and in all the four waves like primary wave secondary wave love wave and relic wave the primary wave is the fastest because it's move in a straight line then after that secondary wave love wave and relic wave so the fastest wave is the primary wave and the least is the relic wave so how we will generally measure our earthquake? so the earthquake is measured using a instrument called seismograph or seismometer you can say also but seismograph is like very old and it generally have three components sensor recorder and timer so this is like very simple seismograph which was used in the earlier earlier stage now we use electrical seismometer but this phenomena the, the mechanism of the seismograph can be understand from this so the seismograph generally consists of string here is the string a magnet pendulum bob rotating drum a pen attached to the pendulum bob support and chart paper so here here the pendulum bob string 
magnet and the support they are called our sensor the pen this graph paper or drum these are called the recorder and the rotating drum the motor which rotates is the drum that is our timer so once the once the earthquake happened the magnet the magnet here you see it is used to provide a damping so that it will control the amplitude of the oscillation and the earthquake the, the ground is shaking and you can see our pendulum is also moving according to the ground and they are creating one oscillogram we'll talk about oscillogram in our later chapters so this is the function of our seismograph so this is our present seismograph which is used currently this is like electrical or we can say kinematic seismograph next strong ground motion motions the strong ground motions are generally described in the terms of displacement velocity or acceleration with the time recorded so we present our earthquake like we see the seismograph there we plot, plot a graph that graph we plot in terms of our displacement either displacement velocity or acceleration and generally we use acceleration with time so the ground acceleration versus time recorded at any point during an earthquake earthquake is called oscillogram the ground acceleration the acceleration we are getting versus the time recorded we call it oscillogram and here the displacement velocity and acceleration you you know that both are like integrable or derivative like if you have acceleration you can integrate it one time to get the velocity integrate it twice to get the displacement so all three are integrated calculus so this is the example of some of the earthquake and their oscillogram so you can see here so there generally the oscillogram varies depends on the energy released at the source so what is my strain energy at the source then the type of sleep like either it is deep sleep or strike sleep at the fault structure geology along the travel path what is the geology if there is like it's occur inside ocean or sea then it will cause tsunami so if it's open in the himalayan regions so there is snow so it can cause avalanche and it can open in the mountain areas like which happen in the manipur mizoram mizoram there we can have landslides and some other cases also and the local local soil what kind of soil is there what kind of soil like it can be soft soil medium soil or hard soil hard soil are generally made of rock and soft soil are like sandy soils so what information does our acceleration carry so our acceleration carry peak amplitude it carry our peak amplitude duration the total duration zero up to what time it is the acceleration is going on so generally our earthquake last only for few seconds like here you see the main earthquake the strong waves are coming for few seconds few seconds it's like 5 6 or 10 seconds maximum and rest are like secondary waves so after that we have frequency content so what is my amplitude at any given time and energy content what is the energy at any given frequency <laughs> next how we measure our earthquake so generally we measure our earthquake using magnitude which is the quantitative measure magnitude is a quantitative measure of the actual size of the earthquake and generally it is measured using richter scale we use richter scale to measure the earthquake as the professor richter saw there are like as we see before here you see there are the waves the waves are very strong but here the 1985 mexico earthquake you see the waves are not strong at one point but it is coming and going on so this earthquake is more destructive than this one because it's coming for the short time but it is it is there this earthquake is for the long time so in both cases the richter decided how he will measure the earthquake so he generally given the ranking 
from 1 to 10. The magnitude on the Richter scales are described from 1. 1, it is not there because it's like not any effective earthquake to 10. The 10 is like most destructive and we have not seen any earthquake which have magnitude of 10. We have seen earthquake which have magnitude which have magnitude more than like, like Chile earthquake in 1960, Alaska 1964. And generally, you know, in Japan, every day we got earthquake in a, like it's a common thing in Japan, the earthquake. So uh, from eight to nine magnitude, the earthquake, they are great, are called great earthquake and near total destruction, or there will be a massive loss of life, property. And seven to eight earthquake, Magnitude earthquake are major earthquake and severe economical impact. Major earthquake and severe economical impact or large loss of life. From six to seven magnitude, there will be strong earthquake damage, like financial damage and loss of life. From from five to six, if the earthquake is called moderate earthquake, there will be property damage only. And there will be life loss or injuries. From four magnitude, light earthquake, some property may damage. Three to four, it is called minor earthquake. And only this earthquake is felt by humans. Like you are sitting in a room and you felt something is shaking behind your feet. So that that kind of earthquake is a minor earthquake. So generally, those earthquakes happens like hundred thousand, like uh, from magnitude two to four earthquake. They generally are every day. It's are happening, but the large earthquake which are above eight magnitude, th those happen like one or two, one to three times in a year. Like there was a recent earthquake in Mexico on in June two thousand twenty, and the magnitude over there was like seven point four, and there was like ma massive destruction because of that earthquake. Next is the intensity of the earthquake. So intensity is the quality measure of the actual shaking at a location during an earthquake. So the magnitude is measure the size of the earthquake, but intensity measure the actual shaking at the location. What is the actual damage or actual shaking happening at a particular location? So generally we measure intensity using two different scale that is modify Mercalli intensity or MMI scale and Mendeb, Sponho, Karnik, MSK scale. And both scales are similar to each other. There are not a lot of difference and both ranges from the Roman numerical one to no Roman numerical 12. Where the one, where, where the one is the least perceptive, like you only experience or we, can, we don't experience also. And a 12, 12 is the most severe. And generally, our intensity is based on the perception of the people and animals, like what is the loss of life, how you have you felt the earthquake. There is a website, USGS, United States Geological Survey website. Whenever there is an earthquake, they conduct a survey if, if you have felt the earthquake or not. Like generally nowadays, people in Facebook post there if they are safe or not from the earthquake. But generally, USGS do the survey and they tell what is the intensity of the place based on the survey from the people. Then the performance of the building, how my building is performance. The, the, if the building is completely damaged, if there is only cracks or if there are like very minor cracks and we are able to leave there. So, and the changes to the natural surrounding. So the natural surrounding, how it is like our trees, forest and the river, how they have behaving. If the forest is completely destroyed, or the river, sorry, the from the sea, we have some tsunami or not. So this, the intensity are based generally on these three points, perceptions of the people and animals, performance of buildings and changes to the natural surroundings. So if you understand the intensity, let us consider our, the earthquake happened in Bhuj, Gujarat in 2001. And that was like very big or destructive earthquake. So in the left side, you can see this 1819 represent the epicenter of the earthquake. Here the earthquake happened. Then after the earthquake, we will have seismic waves. So this, the places like here, all these places in the square dot are destructive to the buildings. 
all those places with uh, with the clo open square dot are damaged but not destructive to the building there are some damage minor damage which are repairable like there are some damage in the buildings but you can repair it or retrofit it and if you move forward and toward mumbai it was felt you feel like you are sitting in the room you felt the earthquake below your feet but there was no permanent damage to the structure or anything so here where the earthquake is happening the epicenter near the epicenter to the next this is called this map is called isosesmal map like you have learned about the contours in your survey is similar so here we but we describe it according to our intensity intensity of the earthquake so near the near where the earthquake is happening the intensity is very high because the it is more destructive to the buildings but as we move away from our epicenter the intensity decreases so we can understand that the more the number of intensity that is more damage more destructive and as the intensity decreases it is less perceptible so generally many people have confusion between magnitude and intensity you have learned this thing many times but still you will get confusion like during your exams or any later on so there is like a lot of confusion between magnitude and intensity so always remember magnitude is a quantitative measure and intensity is a qualitative measure and magnitude actually magnitude of an earthquake is a measure of its size what is the size of my earthquake whereas intensity is the indicator of the severity of the shaking generated at a given location at a given location what is the damage what is the destruction how heavy is my destruction or how severe is my destruction that's hello our intensity uh, gil sorry to sorry to interrupt you actually someone tried to present so can you disconnect your presentation and start once again hello someone has tried to present that's why your presentation is not visible to all so can you just stop presenting again you start from from where you left which one which slide the same slide uh, just stop presenting yeah and uh, start one second start one second one second now become wherever the slide penalty first uh, disconnect your uh, first uh, present present your screen the yeah it's visible now uh, not visible actually uh, wait please present again present your screen one second yeah yeah now it is visible yeah it is visible 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 now visible okay so slide number 20 right this slide so the difference between magnitude and intensity so the magnitude is the magnitude is the quantity measure of an earthquake whereas intensity is the quality measure the magnitude of an earthquake is actually the measure of its size like what is the size of my earthquake whereas intensity is the indicator of the severity like how severe the ground shaking is generating at a given location so to understand magnitude the difference between the magnitude and the intensity we can see this example let us say there is a 100 watt bulb and the illumination you can see the illumination of location near the 100 watt bulb near the near the surface near the this bulb is 100 lumen or the intensity of the light is 100 lumen but as we go far away from this bulb 100 watt bulb we see dullness the light the lumen the the illumination of the light is measured in unit lumen so they are decreasing like 100 50 and 20 so generally this 
at a particular location it depend on the wattage of the bulb what is the wattage of the bulb so here the size of the bulb the 100 watt bulb is like the magnitude of an earthquake so 100 watt bulb where the bulb is present the size of the bulb is the magnitude of the earthquake and the illumination at a location like if you are considering this location the illumination at this location is 100 lumens is like the intensity of shaking at that location it's the intensity of location so as we go far from our far away from our source the illum illumination decreases the intensity of the light or intensity of the shaking is decreasing <clears throat> so we have learned about the basic basics of the earthquake engineering like how the earthquake occurs what are the different kinds of faults the the seismic waves what are the different kinds of seismic waves how we measure the earthquake what is the magnitude and intensity of an earthquake so let us consider our place like india so what is the geographical layout and tectonic plates boundaries at india so as we see as we, as i discussed earlier there is one major fault line near the himalayas that is called indian plate which is here crossing the upper part jammu and kashmir ladakh and it's going towards the tibet presently in china and coming back to the north north eastern states and the, another plain is the indo gangetic plain indus gangas plain narmada plain mahanadi plain mahanadi plain which is in odisha and godavari plain so based on these plains and fault line the seismic zones in india are generally divided into four parts zone 2 zone 3 zone 4 and zone 5 previously we have five zones but in 1970 they replaced the zone 1 and they replaced the zone 1 with zone 2 only now we have zone 2 zone 3 zone 4 and zone 5 so all these places near the himalayas are zone 4 or zone 5 and the places which are near the plains this plain narmada plain sindhu gangetic plain mahanadi plain or godavari plain are the zone 3 and rest so yeah zone 3 and rest part of india is zone 2 so the zone 5 which is present here or in here near the buj gujarat so they are very high risk there is very high risk of suffering earthquake and there the intensity is more than 9 so the zone 5 the so the zones are generally distinguished in terms of intensity if the intensity is more than 9 then then it is considered zone 5 and there is like very high risk of suffering earthquake and in that case in zone 5 we have destruction of the building life there will be a median of losses in zone 5 in zone 4 there is high damage risk zone it is very high damage risk zone there will be high damage there will be damage to the building the building will stand it will be like damage but it will still stand but it you can't occupy the occupancy of the building will be not there you can't go and stay in the building that and the intensity of that area that zone is 8 the zone 3 is a moderate damage risk zone where the intensity is 7 seven to so where the buildings get damaged but still it's repairable like you you need to do do some repair or retrofit work work after that you can stay in that building and the intensity of that zone is 77 and the low damage risk zone where the earthquake doesn't have any severe damage like you will get in our buildings you will get only cracks hairline cracks or tear or fracture cracks that tip and that is like you can go and stay there and you can repair any time you want and the intensity of those places are less than 6 so let's talk about some of the famous earthquake so recently there was a earthquake in oaxaca mexico on 26 june 2020 with a magnitude of 7.4 let's see this video so what happened to the swimming pool during such kind of earthquake when we get an earthquake of magnitude 7.4 what happened to the our swimming pool and this swimming pool was around 200 km away from the epicenter but still you can see the wave is generating you 
because of the shaking and the from the swimming pool from the swimming pool you can know what kind of waves it is like in this case in this case this is relix wave so these are the some of the damages done to our building so there the buildings are like stone masonry so stone masonry doesn't have any reinforcement so it generally collide when the destruction has been done the another earthquake which happened in 2015 in nepal which is called nepal earthquake or gorkha earthquake with a magnitude of 7.8 which was also felt in india in some part of uttar pradesh bihar and uttarakhand but there was a huge amount of damage in nepal mainly the kathmandu area and the building across the kathmandu you can see all are destructed it become like a field i went there in nepal in 2016 for my for a, to attend a conference and i saw all those things the famous darbar square in kathmandu if you go i went there and it was like a complete ground there was no building standing all the historical buildings were damaged and they were trying to rebuild they are discussing because that's why they organized that conference to discuss how we can protect our building from such kind of earthquake so sometimes the earthquake are like very destructive the next earthquake is the famous earthquake in Earth, india that is bhus earthquake so this earthquake you will find example in everywhere everywhere if you are going for earthquake engineering you will find the example of bhus earthquake everywhere because the loss at the at this time of earthquake was very large like if you have seen the movie kai poche you have seen there is a like they have, they will talk there is a moment when there is one earthquake so they talk about this earthquake only so in that the magnitude was 7.7 and you see even our archi frame which archi frame structure which are the strongest structure which have the ability to sustain earthquake still they get damaged and this is one service tank which is above the our building the service tank is above the building it also get damaged so here the problem in this structure was the service tank you should not make your service tank very heavy if the service tank is very heavy it can it can get damaged for sure the rest of the building you see there is no no damage no such kind of damage but the service tank damage complete the upper story of the building so there is one part in the earthquake where you generally design the service tank or tank water tank for earthquake and those water tanks are called single degree of freedom where you learn about how to design our water tank or service tank the next earthquake is nigata earthquake in japan you are familiar with japan like in japan every day there is some earthquake and they have now design their building such that they can sustain they can live with the earthquake they are living with the earthquake over there in japan so this earthquake why i am giving this example because here the devastation of the buildings or the collapse of the building was due to the liquefaction phenomena the because of the seismic wave the soil below the soil beneath the building become like behave like liquid it's liquid fire it become very soft and because of that softness the building completely collapsed in out of place yeah in out of place in out it's out of plane for position so we talk about the basics basics of the earthquake engineering like how earthquake occur what is my seismic waves and what are the different kinds of fault line and how the earthquake can be devastating and if you these are the like a basic thing but if you want to learn more about the earthquake so you can also like if you want to more learn more about the seismological part like how the earthquake is occurring what is the fault line why how i i will calculate the magnitude and uh, intensity so generally i can refer you this book introduction to seismology by peter and sirer which is cambridge university press book and you can understand about the fault line and the surface surface below the earth and if you are interested in the structural dynamics like my field of study is structural dynamics only i my research is also based on structural dynamics so structural dynamics theory and computation by mario pass 
which is Springer publication. This is very small book, but very conceptual book. You can understand the concept of the book, the vibration, how the vibration is happening, the plate theories, the beam theories, and the and a single degree or multiple degree of freedom for the structure. All these books is completely for the structure. Similarly, another book by Anil K. Chopra, Dynamics of the Structure. This is also one of the good books to understand the concept of the structure dynamics, structure dynamics. And here he here, here also showed how to calculate the different, different strength and the displacement of the structure, the different mo modes what are the different modes like first mode, second mode. The next book is from our Indian author, Pankaj Agrawal and Manish Srikhande, Earthquake Resistance Design of Structure. So these books can be used for the, like they have shown the calculation based on the Indian course, IS 1893-2016 part one. And it's one of the good books. And both of them like Pankaj Agrawal and Manish Srikhande was my professor in IIT Ruki when I, I was doing my master. So, and another book is by Manish Sikhande, Finite Element Matter and Computational Structural Dynamics. So here I want to mention, if you are going for earthquake engineering, so it's very important for, important you should have a basic mathematical concept, not basic, your first year and second year mathematical concept should be clear, like wave theories, the differential equations, Laplace transform, Fourier transform, numerical matter, all these two are important in earthquake engineering. When you are going for structural engineering or soil engineering, because when you design, you need all of this, all of these things. And generally, when you calculate the earthquake data, like earthquake engineering, if you are designing a building, generally you deal in a software, because in earthquake engineering, we, we are not talking about a simple structure. There are many millions if you know the matrix, in matrix we have like single degree, two, de two degree or three dimensional degree of freedom, but in case of earthquake, when you're designing, we have multiple degree of freedom. And you can't do that by like hand calculation. You need to know the software. So there are different softwares like MATLAB. And generally for a structure, you can use SAP or finite element, you can use ANSYS, Avacus. So you are in the third year and fourth year, but you need to know all those things in the future. You need to know the software, different kind of software present. And even in the job market now, people need, like if you are going for a construction job, it's okay. But if you are going for a design job, if you want to design a building or any structure or any superstructure like bridges, dams, then you need to know the software. You need, at least you need to have the knowledge of that to design it. <laughs> The next is for soil dynamics. If you are interested in what is the behavior of the soil or my foundation, so you can prefer this book, Fundamentals of Soil Dynamics and Earthquake Engineering by Bharat B. Prasad. That is PHI Learning by PHI Learning Private Limited. And if you are more data about the about the earthquake, you can follow this website like sesmo.gov.in. It is Indian website which provides the data of the recent earthquake happening around the world or around nearby places in the India, nearby places in India. So generally, India, Nepal, Bhutan, all consider the same IS code. They all consider the same IS 1893-2016 code for the design of their building. And if you want to learn the basic earthquake tips and many more data, you can go through the NICC, the National Information Center for Earthquake Engineering, IIT Kanpur. They provide a lot of data over there and you can understand the basicity of the basics of the earthquake very easily, the how the buildings are behavior, what are the different different kinds of cracks, and how my soil should soil is behaving and what should be done, like what is the caudal provision, how the code is what the code is saying, how to design our building. So in our buildings generally we design in for earthquake engineering. We design for the ductility, not for the strength. Generally, it is designed for the ductility, not for the strength. The strength, we never see about the strength because once there is an earthquake, once there is a building, like if the, there is a, there is a, if there is building is under the earthquake, 
then we we need to go out from that building so at that time we need some time and that time can be provided by the ductility not by the strength if you provide strength the structure can collapse suddenly like it can it can behave in a brittle failure if there is a brittle failure the building collapses suddenly and you are you are trying to go out and you you are inside that building you like trapped in that building so it's better always to design our building with ductility so that is the basic concept which which is used in the is code also and which is used in the earthquake engineering so all the thing you are learning here is the static part but earthquake engineering is the dynamic part you do all the design all the static design after that you do the earthquake earthquake engineering design you do the like how i am going to provide my reinforcement there is a different code which says how we can provide the code is 9392 is 3092 code and you can learn about how to provide our ductile ductile how to design our how to provide reinforcement so that it can provide ductility so that's it from my side thank you i would like to thank the professor alo hod government college of engineering and the coordinator professor sitantu for giving me this opportunity to speak among you and if you have any questions you can ask yeah thank you guris uh, for for your very informative presentation if students have some questions uh, and ask few uh, few questions to your friends have posted prasanjit vishwas has asked sir what is the exact function of the bob and the magnet in the seismograph what what is the exact function of what is the exact function of the bob and the magnet in seismograph okay so here this magnet is pro is the magnet is here to provide a damping the damping the concept of the damping you can understand from the spring like uh, you have uh, like let us consider a train railway train okay in railway coaches there are different coaches like sleeper coach ac coach general coach so if i am traveling in a general coach so what do you feel if you are traveling in a general coach it will be like less comfortable the comfortability will be very less you will feel like very much taking the coach is very much taking but when you shift to the sleeper coach the taking is less but once you go to the ac there will be taking but you will not feel that why in all those thing because if you see the the coaches below the coaches near the the wheels there are very large springs very large amount springs are there and those springs provide damping so those springs are very well provided in the ac coaches that's why you feel very less damping you can also see if you have like this and uh, with a spring so it can control the magnetic magnet here is acting like a damper the damper is used to control the oscillation the frequency of the oscillation it can control the frequency of the oscillation and keep the bob the bob in their position okay so this is the function of the magnet which is generally act as a damper to center it will keep the center if my the string sorry this is string this is string or from bob is not in the center then my where it will go give the reading it will not give the reading on this surface this chart paper it can give reading or whatever else so this magnet is used to keep this in the center position it to keep this in the center position and the function of the plumb bob in this one you know what is the plumb bob generally if you keep the plumb bob it will keep rotating so they are generally it's connected with a pen here you go further yeah here here there is a pen attached to the pendulum bob and this pen is used to put the 
this thing, the history on this chart paper, the actual data on the chart paper, the accelerogram. So that is the use of this thing. Okay. Yeah. Next, as we know, uh, the inner core, of, inner core is higher in temperature than the outer core. So how the inner core is in solid state and the outer core is in liquid state? How do I know this thing? Yeah, generally these are done by the survey, right? So when the earth surface like the heavy metals, when the, this thing happened millions of years ago, the, generally the earth surface, the solid surface, the heavy surface, the heavy metals should, suppose I have containing a glass of, in a glass, there is a water, okay, there is water and some heavy metals also there. So the heavy metals, what will happen to the heavy metals, the density be depend on the density of the water and the metals the more denser the more denser object will go down similarly here the more denser the, the density of the metal is like it is more dense than the other thing that's why it it goes to the down to the center the inner core and the other part the liquid part stay above but that liquid part has, has very high temperature and you can see like the molten lava it's like molten lava over there and this thing is like the part of the seismologist. And if you want to understand this phenomena, you can read Introduction to Seismology or any geophysics book. You can better understand this phenomena, how this is like happening. But generally, it depends on the density of the material. Okay. Uh, what can be the highest possible density of the earthquake but, uh, practically possible on Earth? What is the maximum? Maximum, uh, what can be the highest possible intensity of earthquake practically possible on Earth? Practical. The maximum intensity of Earth is like 12, but we have seen 11 intensity also. There is already an earthquake where the intensity of the earth, uh, intensity was 11. So that's why they have ranked it to 1 to 12. We have not seen the intensity 12, but we have seen 11. And it depends on the earthquake, the type of the, the magnitude doesn't define the intensity. If there is like very high magnitude of the earthquake event, the 9, 9.7, it doesn't say the intensity will be also high. Generally, the intensity can be low also. So the maximum we have seen 11 intensity. Okay. Uh, sir, certain earthquakes have a negative magnitude. Is this an error? Which earthquake have negative magnitude? Uh, I have not heard this thing that uh, some earthquake have negative uh, magnitude because our scale magnitude Richter scale is like 1 to 10 and there are also some scales like body wave or surface wave scales are there. I have not uh, learned about those scales. Because basically my my studies is like structural engineering. I am not uh, basic. I only learn the basic part of the earthquake engineering. So I have heard only one to ten, not uh, any negative earthquake. Earthquake with negative magnitude. So next, as per uh, US United States, US GS give the information about the magnitude of the earthquakes. So, who provide the information of seismic waves for India? Who provide? I already saw a website, seismo.gov.in. Uh, here you see the seismo.gov.in. Here you can find the earthquake data for India. And also different institutes like uh, when I was studying in IIT Roorkee, we have a separately based like separate office in our department where we calculate the, this magnitude and there we can provide a data also. In IIT Kanpur also they provide this data. Okay. Next. How do an engineer work to help people survive in earthquake? Or help people? How survive. do an engineer work to help people 
help people survive during earthquake okay so during earthquake like uh, nobody when the earthquake is happening at at that time we should not consider as a ourselves as a engineer at in terms of saving the lives so in that time we have to rescue the people right so engineer like the earthquake is like coming for very less second 10 second and you see there was a building and after 10 second there will be no building in that time so in that case we generally tell people to go outside in a open area not near to the structure not where and it should be where beforehand and if they are not able to come out from the, their apartment or anywhere from office anywhere so they should find a table or any bed and they can go hide inside below the table or the bed you can suggest this thing whatever you see like you have to be very practical at that time if you see like the earthquake is very fast and if you are inside a building you should hide it's better to hide then coming out from the building because while you are coming out from the building you are in the stress case staircase and you will like the building just collapse and the staircase are like most dangerous spot because it's open area and there is the effect when the earthquake come it effect a lot so my suggestion is like if you are engineer suggest them to come out in an open area if they can otherwise just hide in in the like below the below the bed or below the table or cover themselves with a mattress like this kind of thing uh, have you seen in the america also when the tornadoes all those things come so they generally do such thing only next uh, so the occurrence of earthquakes is a regular and common phenomena or event in earthquake prone countries or islands like japan then why are not the maximum uh, massive buildings made from some lighter element or materials like timber and clay which are used for the smaller houses or buildings uh, sorry can you repeat the question as the occurrence of earthquakes is a regular and common phenomena or event in earthquake prone countries uh, like japan then why are not the massive buildings made from some lighter elements or materials like timber and clay which are used for the smaller houses or buildings yeah the timber and all those things material are not ductile in nature it can't provide a ductility the sufficient ductility we need which can be provided by the steel you know that the steel the steel the strain the steel can strain up to a 5% or more it can strain more than 5% also but a timber can't do that the timber like when the earthquake happened the timber doesn't have that much amount of ductility and it can fail and if you are providing in a like a large structure which is also not possible because the timber will not uh, like a multi story building if you are doing and the timber will not be able to carry that much load it's very light so but we can also do alternative like there are some research in that in that research you can combine timber with steel and provide in a building like combination the the composite material can be created where we can use both the material but as uh, we see like the ductility is the main phenomena required in the earthquake structure earthquake resistance structure we need to go for steel only So, but when the research is successful, we can go for timber. And there are like also some research going on the bamboos also, where people use bamboos. But generally, this kind of use for the small scale structures or buildings, not for the not for the multi-story buildings. So, because of the ductility. Yeah. Next question. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Giris. Uh, we have uh, we have we don't have more questions. Uh, okay. I, on behalf of civil engineering department, uh, thank you uh, for providing your valuable time or sparing your valuable time for our uh, webinar. Um, I thank our HOD Professor Alok Patel for providing constant support for this type of online events. I thank. 
all our faculty members those who have joined uh, in this webinar and other faculty members i thank all the participants uh, from our college from outside our college those who have participated and i hope uh, this session will be very much informative and um, uh, they they will be using this information in their future career thank you so much thank you thank you very much thank you thank you i request the participants to fill up uh, the uh, feedback link uh, after then you can leave and you will be getting the certificates within one or two minutes after filling up this feedback link we will be getting the certificates thank you so much for joining